Good day to each and everyone. My name is Marcel I Regalado from BSZ Filipino 1A. Today, I'm going to discuss the reinforcement theory by Skinner. So, reinforcement theory is the process of shaping behavior by controlling consequences of the behavior. Reinforcement theory proposes that you can change someone's behavior by using reinforcement, punishments, and extinction. Ang teorya ng reinforcement ay ang pag-uugali ng isang individual ay hinuhubog ng mga kahihinatnan ng pag-uugali ng tao. Essentially, the relationship between behavior and its consequences in reinforcement theory is a cause-effect one. For example, you choose work hard today because you know hard work can get more money in the future. Likewise, if you make more money, you will likely desire to work harder. Reinforcement Theory of Motivation in 1957 Bruce Frederick Skinner, an American psychologist at Harvard University, proposed the Reinforcement Theory of Motivation. Further, reinforcement theory overlooks the internal condition of individuals, such as their feelings and intrinsic motivation. Rather, reinforcement theory only focuses on the external environment and behaviors associated with individuals. So, reinforcement theory of motivation has a core principle. Essentially, the reinforcement theory of motivation is based on the law of effect. Alinsunod dito, ang mga individual ay may ilang mga may, mang, may ilang mga pagpipilian ng pag-uugali para sa anumang particular na sitwasyon. Gayun pa man, pipiliin nila ang isa na nagbunga ng pinaka-positibo at kanais-nais na mga resulta sa nakaraan. Also, Reinforcement theory involves two important psychologic concepts, operant behaviors and operant conditioning. Operant behavior implies behavior that elicits the consequences in reinforcement theory. Ito ay nagpapahiwatig ng pag-uugali na naglalabas ng mga kahihinatnan sa teorya ng pagpapatibay. Operant conditioning implies a learning process that focuses on reinforcement role in conditioning. Ito ay nagpapahiwatig ng proseso ng pagkatuto. For example, the manager will give sales commission when a salesperson successfully closes a deal. Closing a deal is an operant behavior while, while educating salespersons that they can gain a sales commission for every successful deals in operant conditioning. The Behavioral Reinforcement Theory Reinforcement theory is an important principle in the field of organizational behavior. Accordingly, the theory provides a cohesive reinforcement theory framework which consists of four aspects of operant conditioning positive reinforcement, negative reinforcement, positive punishment, and negative punishment. That's all. Thank you. So, in 1937, behaviorist B.F. Skinner expanded his upon Thorndike's theory. He coined the term operant conditioning and wrote about it in his book, Schedules of, reinsform, of Reinforcement, which he co-authored with psychologist Charles B. Furster. Operant conditioning, also known as instrumental conditioning or Skinnerian conditioning, is a learning theory in behavioral psychology. So, it can be used to increase or decrease the frequency of certain behaviors through the through the introduction of consequences. So the use of operant conditioning is to change is to change the human behavior. So it can be the positive 
or negative or depending on the intention of the person using the techniques. So, the principles of operant conditioning can be used to can be used to shape behavior in selfish way that aren't in the best interest of the other. So, in other words, it could be good or bad. The two main types of, of behavior modifiers in operant conditioning are called reinforcement and punishment and, con and can also broken down into two subtypes, which is the positive and negative. So reinforcement are consequences that increase the likelihood of a behavior. Punishment are consequences that decrease the likelihood, the likelihood of behavior. So positive reinforcement, the addition of a reward. And the negative reinforcement is the removal of a punishment. So the positive punishment is the addition of a punishment. So the negative punishment is the removal of, of a reward. So example in apparent conditioning that we can used to modify behaviors in our daily life is example of this is parenting. So parents apply principles of operant conditioning to help teach them teach their children about safety and shape them into healthy product productive members of society. So parents can use operant conditioning in positive and negative way. So in positive way parent can offer praises when they when their child do something good or get the highest or or it can be they can give a reward when your children get a high score in exam so the, then in negative way by sending them into by sending them by sending them in room by a, as a punishment or ending a play date in they do, if they don't stop misbehaving. So good morning everyone. The first theory is about reinforcement theory of, of Skinner. And I will explain to you how this theory can be used in a learning situation. So for introduction, we all know that teachers want to see students behave in certain ways and understand the class rules and routines. And they use positive reward or, neg or negative consequences to increase the desired actions while decreasing unwanted ones. So example of positive reinforcement in a classroom. So me as a pre-service teacher, notice that two of my students are really participative and give their best during, during discussions and in our classroom. So for me to reinforce my students' behavior, I will offer a reward to strengthen their motivation to participate. So example is mga estudyante ko nun is mga um, kindergarten or elementary. So ibibigay kong reward, a positive positive reward sa kanila is some stickers, yung tatak-tatak sa kamay. And if mga if malalaking bata naman din yung tinuturuan, um, I will offer their them a good grades. Kasi once the students give their best in a classroom and participate well, um, maibibigay talaga ng teacher ang good grades sa kanila because they deserved it. So, pag may positive reinforcement, meron din tayong negative reinforcement. So, the question is, how can the teacher use it in a learning situation? So, me as a teacher is allowing my students to leave the circle of time for a 5 minutes break after they use the break card. So, the consequence of this behavior and for tolerating students, the group activity that the teacher gave to them will not be finished on time because of kulang na nga ang time kasi ginamit pa ang extra time for break. So, the consequence is in the next meeting, they should continue, continue doing the activity in a limited time na lang kasi nga nung, nung, nung oras na ginagawa ang time, madaming break na ginagamit. So, in the next day or in the next meeting, they will going to continue doing the activity but in a limited time na lang. So, possible mag-apurahan sila which means possible na hindi na maganda ang output, uh, may deduction na, may deduction of grades na 
and hindi nila ma-perform or ma-present well. So, based on Skinner concept of reinforcement, Skinner thought that students learn best when taught by positive reinforcement. And that students should be engaged in the process, not simply a passive listener. He hypothesized that students who are taught via punishment learn how to avoid punishment. Yun yung importance ng theory ni, ni Skinner. Now, we should always um, adapt positive reinforcement than negative reinforcement. Pero yung negative reinforcement is magbe-benefit kasi alam ng student iwasan kasi negative nga siya, alam ng student na iwasan at magla-learn sila doon na mayroon talagang consequences when they do negative reinforcement. Good day everyone! I am Siti Rads Maeva Diri from BSL Filipino 1A. So now, I will discuss the expectancy theory of Victor Harold Broom. So, Victor Harold Broom created the expectancy theory of motivation in 1964. His study of psychology in uh, has shed light on how people behave in the workplace, particularly when it comes to motivation, leadership, and decision making. So, etong expectancy theory of Broom. Ito ay isang motivation para sa mga bawat empleyado na nagtatrabaho sa isang kumpanya. Nagbibigay ito guide or motivation para maging magsumikap sila sa ginagampanan nilang trabaho sa isang kumpanya. So, ang um, Ang expectancy theory ni Broome ay napakahalaga kung ikaw ay isang empleyado para magawa mo ang tungkulin mo na nang maayos, nang maayos at maging mabuting empleyado. Lalo na kapag ikaw ay isang pinuno ng isang kumpanya. Dahil sa theory na to is marunong mo, marunong kang i-handle or may ideya ka. kung paano mo hahawakan yung mga tauhan mo. So, etong teori na to is napakahalaga sa mga pinuno ng kumpanya and also sa mga empleyado. Kasi dahil dito, parang minomotivate tayo kung minomotivate tayo para maging isang kung paano maging isang mabuting pinuno at empleyado. theory na ito. Dahil sa ideya ng theory na ito, ang bawat empleyado ay pinapahalagahan nila yung mga tungkulin nila para makamit nila yung mga gantin palak like yung mga bonus. So, lahat sila sama-samang nagsusunikap para makuha yung mga gantin palak na gusto nila. Ang ganda tignan na ang ganda nilang tignan na sabay-sabay silang nagsusunikap para mag para mag para makuha ang kanilang kantin pala. So dahil dito, dahil sa theory na to is lahat ng mga empleyado ay nagsusumikap. Nagsusumikap at maging mabuting mabuting empleyado para sa kanilang mga tupod. Sinabi din dito ni Broom na dapat ang isang empleyado ay may salik. Tulad ng meron siya ng personalidad kakayahan. Siyempre, kapag ka o isang empleyado, dapat meron kang kakayahan na kaya mong gawin ang isang bagay o kaya mong gampanan yung isang, yung isang tungkulin. At kailangan meron kang karanasan. Siyempre, mas madali na lang kung may karanasan ka. Mas madali mo na lang gawin yung mga bagay-bagay na i- i-assign sa'yo or i-pop, i-assign sa'yo. May, and ka, yung pangatlo is yung may kaalaman kung may kaalaman ka sa, bawa, sa mga ginagawa mo madali mo na lang yung, madali mo na lang yung magagaw at hindi ka mahihirapan sa theory ni, Bro, ni Victor Harold Broome is ito ay isang, isang motivation para sa bawat empleyado na magsumikap sa kanilang mga tungkulin sa mga Sa mga kanilang, sa mga tungkulin na ginagampanan nila sa isang trabaho. 
So good day everyone, I am Shima Osin from BS Ed Filipino 1A. So for today's video, I will discuss about Victor Harold Broom Theory. So Victor Harold Broom created the expectancy theory of motivation in 1964. So this theory tells about on how it's very important to motivate every individual upang enhance nila ang kanilang confident at performance. So, to make the connection between motivation, effort, and performance, expectancy theory has three variables. So, number one is expectancy is that belief that increased effort will lead to increased performance. So, this tells about na kung paano mo increase ang effort, ganun din ang resulta ng iyong performance. So, number two is instrumentality is that believe that if you perform well, that a valued outcome will be received. So, sinasabi dito na kung nagpapakita ka o kung magawa ka ng maganda, nagdududat dito na maganda ang resulta. Siyempre, if yung intention natin ay malinis, magdududat talaga ito ng maganda ang resulta. So, the last is valence. Is how much an individual values the reward. It's how important the reward is to you. So, sinasabi dito na kung gaano ang pagpapahalaga ng ganti pala ng bawat individual, karaniwang nakadepende ito sa mga individual na pangangailangan, layunin, kagustuhan, karanasan at background ng empleyado. So, does Broom Expectancy Theory of Motivation is not about self-interest. In the rewards about the associations, people make towards expect outcomes and the contribution they feel they can make towards those outcomes. That's all. So the next theory to be explained is the expectancy theory of Vroom. So how this how this theory can be used in a learning situation. So first for introduction or for balik tanaw, Suge uh, this theory suggests that individuals are motivated to perform if they know that their extra performance is recognized and rewarded. can be used in a classroom through use of connection of said result as the consequence of completing a task or activity. So, ganito yung example. So, as a pre-service teacher, I will be going to give them an activity and I will group my students into five. So, my groupings na. This group activity will serve as their final, final performance kasi example lang na magtatapos na yung um, yung semester or magtatapos na ang third grading, ganon, etc. So, it is a performance, a final performance nila na ipapasa akin. So, I will let them create a PowerPoint presentation. So, for them to have a motivation or ganahan silang gawin yun, ganahan silang mag-participate as a team, Di ba, pinapagawa sila ng PowerPoint presentation. So, for them to have a motivation to pass it on time, I will announce it to the class that whoever groups have passed the PowerPoint presentation on time will be rewarded. Um, and those group who pass, who pass first will have a chance to get a perfect and higher score. Kasi ginaganahan yung student na mag-participate pag alam nilang sa huli ay may reward sila. Ganun yun expectancy theory ni ni Vroom. Ganun ang pag-explain and yun ang suggestion talaga for individuals to be motivated and to perform well in classroom. Good day everyone. I am Shadia P. Hasib from BS Ed Filipino 1A. So today, I will tackle about the theory of Edwin Locke, which is the motivation theory. So first of all, who is this Edwin Locke? Edwin Locke is an American psychologist and philosopher who is best known for his work on motivation and goal setting theory. So, what is this goal setting theory? This theory talks about an individual's beliefs in their ability to achieve specific goal or task. So, it demonstrated that individuals with high self-efficacy are more likely to achieve and set challenging goals and persist their efforts to achieve them. 
and this motivation theory serve as a motivation by directing a person's attention and effort towards a specific outcome. This also emphasizes the importance of feedback in goal setting. So, feedback allows individuals to monitor their progress towards their goals and make adjustments as necessary. So, the question is, what is the importance of this theory? The importance of this theory is it provides a powerful tool for motivating individuals and improving performance. And the following are the key principles of the goal setting theory. We have five key principles. Number one is clarity. Number two is challenge. Number three, commitment. Number four, feedback. And number five is task complexity. Clarity means a clear measurable goal is more achievable than one that is poorly defined. In other words, be specific. Number two is challenge. Challenge means the goal must have a decent level of difficulty in order to motivate you to strive towards your goal. Number three is commitment. Commitment means put deliberate effort into meeting this goal. Share your goal with someone in order to increase your accountability to meet that goal. Number four is feedback. Feedback allows individuals to monitor their progress towards their goals and make adjustments as necessary. And finally, number five is task complexity. Task complexity means if a goal is really tough, make sure you give yourself some padding to give you the best chance of succeeding. And that is the key principles of the goal setting theory. And now, I will teach you on how to develop a plan using the SMART model. It is an effective way to set and accomplish goals. So, what is this SMART model? SMART means specific, be measurable, be achievable, be realistic, and time-bound. So, number one is be specific. Specific means the goals should be as specific as possible. And number two is measurable. Measurable means the goal should be measurable. And number three is be achievable in developing a plan. Achievable means goals should be fairly challenging to keep employees engaged and to provide a better upon accomplishing the goal. And number four is realistic. In setting a goal um, that is impossible or out of reach will not offer motivational value. In other words, set a goal that can realistically be met. And lastly is time bound. Goals should be a clear and have a time frame in which they need to be reached. And that's all. Hi, good day. I'm Aisa Sayari, BSL Filipino 1A. Today, I will discuss the Edwin Locke theory, the goal setting theory. Uh, what is the goal setting theory? The goal setting theory is an unorganizational the psychology theory. It's also sometimes called the, the, the goal setting theory of motivation. According to this theory, goals that are clear, specific, and challenging are more motivating than vague goals or easy goals. Goal setting theory explains the mechanism by which goals influence behavior and how the latter can be moderated by goal characteristic, difficulty, and specificity. The level of commitment, the importance of the goal levels of self-efficacy, feedback, and thus complexity. This is the example of Goal setting in learning. Goal setting is the process of establishing an outcome, a goal to solve a 
as the aim of one's action. Lock and Latham 2020. Setting goals makes the direction of learning clear to the student and the teacher, increasing students' motivation and achievement levels. The next story is about goal-setting theory of luck. Uh, Edwin Locke found that individuals who set the difficult goal perform better than those who set an, a general and easy goal. So in a learning situation and as a pre-service teacher, in this luck theory can be used, this luck theory can be used um, by the instrument of the teachers. So yung work ng teachers tito is to motivate students. Teachers can help students set a variety of goals that help uh, that help them move ahead in their academics. So, Edwin theory can be uh, Edwin Lux theory can be applied in a classroom by ensuring that your students have the clarity about the goals that they will set. This this will help them to set their goals in an achievable way. How can we use this goal setting theory of Lux in a learning situation? So as a pre-service teacher or as a parents in a, as a parents, motivation to students and to our children is really there na or given na yon. So let's say you are a pre-service teacher and you want to motivate your students to wrap up a project. So instead of setting a goal of of get this project to finish as soon as possible or apurahan siyang magagawa, you want to make it clear or you want to be get more clear. So, for example, you might set a goal. So, instead of finishing the project as soon as possible, you want to set a goal to finish of finishing the project by the end of the month. Then, break, the, break into tasks for each group and make, and make their available to work on their teammates. So, in this motivation of goal setting theory, it results a good output kasi meron silang ahead of time para mag-work together for to achieve their to achieve their goal. So, this results a good output and in this way, the set, the set goal can be achieved by the students. Hello, good day everyone. My name is Rohi Hanapi. I am and I am from BSFK1A. So, today I'm going to share to you my knowledge about Self-determination theory by Desi and Ryan. So what first is self-determination? So this refers to a person's ability to make choices and manage their own life. Being self-determined means that you feel in greater control as opposed to being non-self-determined, which can leave you feeling that your life is controlled by others. So it also states that people are motivated to grow and change by three innate or universal psychological needs. The concept of intrinsic motivation or engaging in activities for the inherent reward of the behavior itself plays an important role in this story. So what are the highlights of self-determination theory or the SDT DC and Ryan 2000? So this posits that fulfillment of three basic innate psychological needs are autonomy, competence, and relatedness is necessary for optimal human functioning. So we have two types of motivation. These are in intrinsic and extrinsic that explained by Unai. So the explanation for autonomy, so this refers to feeling one has choice and is willingly endorsing one's behavior. The opposite experience is feeling compelled or controlled in one's behavior. Competence refers to the experience of mastery and being effective in one's activity. And the last one is the relatedness. This refers to the need to feel connected and a sense of belongingness with others. So when these needs are optimally supported, evidence suggests that people are more autonomous in their behaviors, are more likely to persist at their behaviors and feel better overall. Hi everyone, I'm Sarhana Cunet from BSAID Filipino 1E. So this is the continuation, the self-determination theory by DC and Ryan. So in this video, I want to introduce you the self-determination as developed by DC and Ryan. DC and Ryan in Dixie's work focuses on two things. Firstly, on the dominant role of extrin intrinsic motivation 
intrinsic motivation is helping us to feel motivated in the workplace, in life, in general. And secondly, on the conditions under which extrinsic motivation. Extrinsic motivation can help to motivate us. So, before we go any further, let's define our terms and understand what, it, what is extrinsic and intrinsic motivation are. Extrinsic motivation is motivation that comes from outside and impose condition its offer of reward and intrinsic motivation comes from inside it's about your drive for fulfillment and growth and that's all last theory to be discussed is about self-determination theory or this theory is all about motivation so this theory has the basic needs three basic needs or the largest purpose of education number one is the autonomy number two is relatedness and number three is the competence so how can we use these three basic needs in a learning situation so first is the support autonomy of learners so in this i know in this in this part you main your main point dito is to offer choices to a student so for example me as a pre-service teacher would like to uh, um, will have a <clears throat> um, activity. So this activity should be should be a group activity because hindi mo to magagawa as ikaw lang magisa. You need um group. You need teammates. So for me to support the learners um, autonomy, I would I would give them the um, I will give them the opportunity to to offer. Uh, I will offer them to choose. To choose their teammates, this will help them to support their autonomy. Hindi yung teachers lang yung naggroup. So in a learning situation, you you should as a teacher you should always have uh, give a chance to your students to choose their group members. So second is the supporting to the needs to relate to others. This main point is to work together. So, main way of supporting students to relate to others is to arrange activities in which students work together. So, as a pre-service teacher, magkakaroon tayo ng um, um, semi-event sa room. Magkakaroon ng semi-event sa room, which is a talent showcase. Ganon. So, for me to... Um, for me to to conduct or to magiging successful yung activity na yan, I will group my students. So, dito, i-group ko yung students dito, but based on their capabilities. Like, um, students good in drawing, students good uh, marunong sa pagkakanta, yung student na marunong sa pagsasayaw, yung student na marunong sa oral or mga poetry, ganon. So, sila yung i-group ko. I will group them accordingly with their specific talents. So, yun na nga, sinabi ko, one can contribute to drawing skills, one can contribute to writing skills, and others can contribute to dramatic skills. This will help them to relate with their classmates. Kasi, the interaction between students to students in a classroom setup is very effective and very needed. Kasi pag walang interaction, walang relationship na may babibuild sa ating classroom. So, last is the supporting the needs for competence. So, um, yung main point dito is the need to feel capable or skilled. So, way to make students feel competent is by selecting activities that are challenging but nonetheless achievable with reasonable efforts and assistance. So, example, as a pre-service teacher, I will emphasize the activities that requires active response from the students like selecting projects, experiments, discussion, and the like that requires students to do more and than simply listening. Kasi in um, skilled kasi, magagamit talaga yung utak nila, yung capabilities nila when you are um, selecting projects, lalo na yung mga experiments in a science uh, science teacher, ano, activities, ganon. So, magagamit talaga yung skills nila and capabilities nila to do such work. 
So that's all for today. We have already explained to you the four theories that has been assigned to our group, which are the reinforcement theory of Skinner, the expectancy theory of Vroom, the goal setting theory of Locke, and the self determination theory of Desi and Ryan. I hope you learned something from our presentation and thank you so much for listening.